One of the things that is unique to this after school space is that there is room and time and uh, leeway to really uh, let young people take the lead and design campaigns, uh, design their projects. And that is something that I think um, is replicable across cities and, and that also is a way for young people to have a voice and to affect change in their schools and their communities. First tip I would give when planning for an effective collaboration or partnership is ask lots of questions and don't think you're gonna have to come with answers. You can truly craft that partnership together. The more you figure out together, the better. Also, I'd suggest having definable measures of success for that partnership or collaboration, such as attendance rates or thresholds of retention for your after school program. sounds painfully obvious, but taking the time up front will pay off down the line. And in fact, the vision is what necessitates the partnership itself. It allows stakeholders to identify where they can play to their strengths and put their resources to the highest and best use. And it makes the work of setting goals, objectives, and tracking progress against them easier if you all see the same picture from the beginning. Everyone brings their own strengths and abilities to a partnership. So it's important that we respect that, as well as their particular protocols and procedures for their own organizations. It's also important that we have buy-in from principals. They are really a key to success. Uh, we don't want to duplicate efforts. We really want to complement each other in terms of our activities and even our trainings. The school and the community after school program share the same students and by having um, joint professional development it builds a sense of a stronger sense of awareness recognition of the contribution of school staff and of school program staff. When community educators work with teachers, they can bring back subjects like arts and social studies that have been squeezed out of the school day. But the key is to have enough time for the teachers and the community partners to plan together and work together. At a school in New York City, a first grade teacher has her students write stories in the morning. In the afternoon, a teaching artist helps the kids make puppets and turn those puppets into plays. These kids are getting opportunities to be creative, have fun, practice English, a double dose of literacy. So in Chicago, the example of shared accountability that I can think of is when we put together the OST project, the goal of that project was to increase high school graduation rates. And so we had the schools, the parks, the libraries, the city of Chicago, and after school manners all working together to increase graduation rates. So now you have a young leader, rec leader, who wants the young people to learn the rules of the game and how to play the game, but they're also involved in the greater goal of engaging young people in their school and keeping them in high school and graduating. To really change young people's lives and make a difference, collective leadership is essential. You can't transform our learning world and learning environment for young people without mayors, superintendents, um, city council members, but also nonprofit leaders and philanthropic leaders and business leaders all being committed to common goals to be attained for young people. So the right kind of leadership working together collectively is essential. Not often enough do school districts and CBOs look for intermediary partners to support them in their grant making process and, and their grant search. And so one of the things the partnership has been most effective at doing is really closely working with school districts to do the grant making process, write the grant, and then secure the funding. Um, because the most important thing to us is that the young people in the communities of need access the resources that they deserve and they're eligible for. Hi, I'm Jessica Donner, Director of the Collaborative for Building After School Systems with your 10th tip. Visit the Expanded Learning and After School Project and CBAS websites to find many more great tips and tools to build strong partnerships. The organizations you've just heard from are experts in many areas, 
from budgeting to training to getting kids excited about learning. Whatever your interest is, these are great places to get started.